Dealing with this optimum filter or winner filter. Winner rifler filter, just a quick recap. We had a zero mean discrete time random process XN. It was passed through a filter W0WP purposes to generate an output Yn, which is a very good estimate of a desired sequence Dn. So, if you take the error between the two, that error, which is a random process. So, I told you that there is no point in minimizing the absolute value of the error for a particular rain, because next time you observe the en, the waveform will change. So, you take the variance of en and because of stationarity as we saw yesterday, because of stationarity it will become independent of n. So, variance will give the power. After all, dn is 0 mean, xn is 0 mean, therefore, yn is 0 mean. So, en is 0 mean. So, absolute I mean expected value of en square will be the variance. Okay, of E n and if there is a power, if that is minimized because E n will depend on D n and Y n and Y n depends on the weight. So, if you can choose the weight such so that minimum I mean this uh, mean square value of this error is minimized, then those weights will be the optimal weights, very good weights. Then you saw that uh, E n is I mean if you take the variance that is indeed a quadratic function of the filter weights W 0 to W p, which then has either a maxima or minima, only one unique. In our case, obviously, it is minima. So, we found out the minima value that gives the optimal filter for which the variance is minimum. So, that is, if you had designed epsilon square is equal to, you see, I have already eliminated n here because of stationarity. We also verified after substituting for en in the expression yesterday, we found that n goes from everywhere. Okay. This was a quadratic function of the weights w0 to wp. Okay. This was a quadratic function of the weights w0 to wp. Hmm. So, we minimize this, we, do, we gave some formula for matrix differentiation also. So, we minimize this and that led to optimal filter W opt as R inverse P. This is called the FIR winner filter, hmm, this is the FIR winner filter and this gives the information about R matrix R is E X n in general X n Herbesian, but in our case we are dealing with real, yes I forgot to mention that we are dealing with the real valued case. So, that is why it was transpose, this is called the correlation matrix P was E x n d n, this was the definition. Using the R and P, you can compute the optimal filter, that is the winner filter that will give rise to minimum value of epsilon square, all that we have seen yesterday. Okay. <coughs> Actually, I tell you something now and again I will come back to that later after the several lectures. That okay. actually, you know what happens in this estimation thing. Here you are uh, having x n, then x n minus one up to x n minus p. They are multiplied by the weights w zero, w one up to w p, and now added. In general, suppose I have a situation like this. In general, you have got a random set of random variables x one, x two. Is it? Does it go out of the screen? This is a very difficult thing. This screen is out of here. Does it go out of the screen? Is okay. X one, X two. Suppose you have got a set of random variables x one, x two, dot dot dot, xp. Zero mean random variables. Say. Could be complex valued, could be real valued. Okay. You want to estimate another random variable d as a linear combination of these. That is called linear estimation. What we do there, we try to find out the coefficient c1, x1, 
plus C 2 x 2 plus dot 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 plus C p x p. This coefficient C 1 C p are to be found out. So, that if you take the error d minus this, the error I am assuming real otherwise you have to take the mod square, the square the expected value of that that is minimum. That will be a quadratic function of C 1 to C p and therefore, this is minima we find it out. Okay. What is actually happening here you know, you suppose see the analogy forget about the random variable. Suppose I give you some vectors in a three dimensional world or even two dimensional world. One vector say and they may not be at orthogonal, one vector say x another y and there is another third vector you call d, d you want to estimate as a linear combination of y and x. What will you do? You will project it orthogonally on this plane. So, that on this plane this guy is orthogonal, this is orthogonal to this axis, this axis okay. and this much this projection, what is the meaning of this projection? Projection is such that the norm square of the difference that is minimum because it is not this simple geometry. Na? If I do not project it orthogonally on the plane, if I take it this way, I will have so much of difference, so much of this projection is not it? The, this, this will be the difference then. Obviously, norm square of that will be lo lo longer than this, larger than this, is not it? Any project, any estimate of d, what is the best estimate of d? Staying in the plane of plane span by x and y, what is the best estimate of p? You project it orthogonally, take this component, that is the best estimate, because then only the error has minimum norm square, is not it? This is a simple geometry, if you take any other vector connected like this, that will have, that difference will have larger norm square value than the original one. Not only that the projection and you will get only one unique such thing. There is no two such, there is you cannot get two such comp vectors in this plane which will have uh, you know same norm square. I mean you will not have same difference, you cannot have another vector which which if you take the difference, the difference norm square of the difference vector same as the norm square of this difference vector that cannot happen. This projection is unique, all these things in a more abstract space we will prove later in the using abstract vector space, but here you can see this orthogonal projection exists it is unique, okay, exists and unique and this gives a minimum norm square value for the difference. Okay, that is why we say, so this component is a projection and that will be called a linear estimate, because that what is this vector? It will be something of some constant times x, some constant times y, is not it? Any vector in the plane is some, something times x plus something times y. You are familiar with the i vector, j vector, k vector, I am calling x and y vector, is not it? So, projection will be a linear combination of x and y, and that linear combination for which the difference has a minimum norm square error. Okay. Similarly, in the case of random variables, we can for the timing we can only view, later we will prove these things by you know in a vector space, trig bed will prove these things more rigorously. But here you can view, suppose you have got two, two vectors, two random variables x 1 and x 2, you view them as kind of vector say, then you have got a fellow d, another variable. You want to find the best estimate of d as a linear combination of x 1 x 2. So, you can assume, you can imagine a kind of plane or space spanned by x 1 or x 2, where every third element is a linear combination of some linear combination of x 1 and x 2. Okay. In that case, which one will you take as the best linear combination, so that the error is minimized in terms of norm square, that means you have to orthogonally project, but the here it was perfect three dimensional geometry, you had a notion of angle, you know 90 degree, you know orthogonal perpendicularity, there in the case of random variable there is no ang angle. So, I tell you this angle, this so called dot product, they are very special case of a more general dot product, that dot product is called inner product, all those we will discuss later in the course of this uh, as we go along in this course, I am just giving a hint beforehand, because you can always ask me sir why did you suddenly choose a filter, then you are saying I choose a filter and I take a y n and then try to minimize mod n, I mean epsilon square as a function of this, but why filter, why not something else, is it? that question nobody, I mean you people did not ask, I sir, I on my own impose the filter. Isn't it? I on my own impose a filter, then said this epsilon square depend on the filter weights, so why not minimize it? But question is to estimate d and why at all filtered? Why not have some other structure? Maybe that could give better estimate. 
is not it? I am trying to generate the motivation for this filter, why suddenly the filter came. Hmm. So, you see here you know I mean to I mean angle is a by product of the notion of dot product, when dot product between two vectors is 0, then you say the two vectors are orthogonal and the angle between them we give a name 90 degree. So, the dot product thing is more general, okay, the when the two dot, dot product is 0, then you say two vectors are orthogonal. Here this is projection means the difference is orthogonal with this entire plane, that is if you take the two x's, it is orthogonal to both and therefore, orthogonal to any in the plane, but their orthogonality has a clear cut notion in terms of dot product that is that cos theta, is not it cos 90 0. Here I do not have that, but I tell you theta is no consequence. Here also you define a more general dot product, all these things will pro matter will I am telling you will be taken up later more rigorously. Here I am only, only showing analogy, analogy does not hold in mathematics all these things will be proved will be taken up rigorously later, but I am trying to generate the motivation for this filter that is why I am bringing this notion of projection and all that. Okay. Here between any two random variables say x and y if they are complex values in general you take the correlation between them that is called the dot product between x and y which we call actually inner product, dot product is a special case more general term is inner product and you normally show x dot y p dot q instead this is the notation x y the dot notation goes essentially the same, but x comma y this is a dot product in our terminology we call it inner product between x and y there is a more general term and this is defined it should satisfy some property all those things are not showing. Those properties are really, really satisfied that is why it is taken up in mathematics, otherwise it cannot be, it, can, it, it will not do any good, but physically also you can see one thing, correlation gives you what, if the correlation is high, both are 0 mean, is not it. So, this correlation as well as covariance, so if this is high that means the two vectors are highly correlated, so they are alike, that is like you know two vectors in this three dimensional world if they are close to each other, then only their dot product is less, is not it, sorry dot product is high dot product is high. Similarly, if they are correlated, I mean uh, if this correlation goes up, generally they are I mean he, like they are not I mean there is no you know physical notion of near or far here. So, I will not say they are close, but they are quite alike. Okay, there is lot of similarity or some correlation. If they are not okay, then they are I mean like here two vectors if they are far away there is I mean then they are also at, at 90 degree. Okay. That is the far, farthest two vectors can go, it cannot tilt further, then again that other angle starts thinking, is not it. So, dot product becomes 0. Similarly, here also correlation, this correlation is a kind of measure of the dot product between x and y two. If correlation is high, the two vectors are quite alike. So, you can say as though they are close to each other. Okay. And if they are uncorrelated, uncorrelated means covariance 0 and covariance and correlation here are same because mean is 0, that is if this is 0, then I say they are orthogonal because they are not like each other. So, equivalently here I mean it is like the situation of two vectors at 90 degree with each other that kind of situation here. Okay. Using that then another thing is another property of the dot product there was that if you take the any vector in the 3D world and take the dot product with itself that must be a real quantity there is a measure of the length or power energy whatever you know length square or if you treat, treat something energetic the energy whatever okay. it is a measure of that. Similar thing would hold here also you see if you take the inner product with itself E of mod x square which is the mean square value that will be the actually is power okay. this real quantity it gives a measure of how powerful it is and how powerful how less powerful it is and all that. So, this is this actually this will satisfy basic properties of uh, some basic axioms for dot product that we will do later. So, with that inner product if you want to now estimate d as a linear combination of x 1 and x 2 you should find out c 1 x 1 and c 2 x 2 something see I am drawing the singular figure, but actually in the random variable case there is no such you know angle and line and all that, it is only for analogy purpose, please understand that. 
So, I should find out a vector which is C 1 x 1 plus C 2 x 2 some linear combination. So, that d minus this d minus this that is orthogonal to that is this vector is orthogonal to this and this orthogonal means inner product there is a correlation between this guy and this guy 0 correlation between this guy and this guy 0. And here also you see that you will then get only one such orthogonal projection it will exist it is unique and all that which actually transform that basic vector space theory which I again I am repeating we will discuss later. Okay. You will see that I can easily show, I will show in fact here that if you really try to come find a linear combination and take the error, that error will be orthogonal to this. So, that orthogonal property will be satisfied, this is called the, this is the linear estimation, linear actually or orthogonal position based estimation. Okay. In the case of filter, instead of x1, x2, x3 dot dot dot, you have got the random variables x n x n minus 1 x n minus 2 up to x n minus k capital N or whatever it will be n x n minus capital N those random variables so the, the, the successive ones we have some correlation amongst them I want to use their mutual correlation and their correlation with d n okay, to estimate d n as a linear combination of these. So, basically I am trying to project the random variable d n on a plane or a space spanned by x n, x n minus 1, x n minus 2 dot 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 x n minus capital N. So, n dimensional n x n as a linear combination of these, those combiner coefficients are these. They will define the ortho best project, this will be the orthogonal projection of d n. So, it will be a linear combination of those elements, this is the orthogonal projection, the error will be orthogonal to each of the x s, x n, x n minus 1, x n minus 2 up to x n minus 1. That is, if you take the really correlation between e n and x n, e n and x n minus 1, e n and x n minus 2 dot dot dot, it should be 0. And you will see that if you really choose this filter weight, those correlation will be 0. Yeah. I am doing linear mean square estimation. No, why you choose linear estimation? Yes. Why you choose linear estimation? So, linear estimation you have got all this theory now. I mean, this orthogonal projection exists, unique, and everything. And linear, otherwise, you can make it non linear, but then you know, there will be a lot of complications in that convergence problem may come, hardware implementation problem comes, all those things. Linear, we always, you know, to be, to be very honest, we always prefer linearity once I mean, from complexity point of view and also from our inability to handle the you know the enormity of the analysis I mean, math, math involved I mean, where you may not be able to get in solution all that. That is a that, that's you know fundamental thing that books will be silent about nobody will read it, but I know whenever you have linear problem you can solve you can get close form results and they work in practice. Okay. Hmm. But I am trying to give you the physical meaning of this linear estimation it is actually a projection of an unknown vector or target vector or target variable whatever on a plane instead of plane I call it space spread by few excess few components x n x n minus 1 up to x n minus capital A. So, as a linear combination of them where the combiner coefficients are this you get y n y n should be a d orthogonal projection of d n on that plane spanned by those fellows the projection error is this. So, this must be orthogonal to them and we will see now that they are in the orthogonal, but I am telling you I will again start from this philosophy afterwards later I am just giving a hint so that you understand why this filter came. Basically I am doing nothing else but the classical linear mean square estimation only. Where say given a set of random variables you try to find linearly combine them so that the combination becomes an orthogonal projection of that unknown vector on the same plane on the space spanned by those given variables. So, this is nothing but that that is what I wanted to say. We can now see what the orthogonality thing. That is what we have here w 0 to w n, you have got x n, you have got y n, I am repeating that figure for the sake of continuity d n e n. So, what is y n? y n is your w transpose, I am dealing with real case here, later I will deal with complex case that time I may ask you to prove. Okay, this is for the real case, all transpose, no Hermitian transpose. Eh? W transpose x n and I, what is the W transpose here? W is R inverse P 
a few months later I have already put I must be transpose XL and you know transpose of a product of matrices is what P transpose or inverse transpose. This is P transpose or inverse transpose and inverse and then transpose is same as transpose and then inverse you know or not. How do you say that? Suppose I give a matrix, this is a square matrix, A inverse transpose and I say A transpose inverse. They are same. How? Simple thing. Consider this. Consider this, suppose I consider this case, A transpose, A transpose inverse, then this will be I, okay, but A transpose this also equal to I you can see, but A transpose has only unique inverse. If you take A transpose and this guy, now what? Transpose, transpose, so A inverse goes here, A goes here, transpose. A transpose first, A inverse transpose here and A inverse A is I, I transpose I. So, that means this fellow and this fellow both are the inverse of this, but this has a unique inverse. Any square matrix, if it is inverse, it is a unique inverse. So, these two are same, okay. So, this is P transpose or transpose inverse X n. Sometimes I am skipping the underscore, underline, you know, but you should put them. I might skip them. That's my mistake. And R transpose is R, because R is Hermitian, real Hermitian here. So P transpose or XL. Okay. Hmm? P transpose R XL, R inverse XL. Sorry, R inverse XL. Okay. And so what is E N? E n is d n minus this guy. So, I have to show that E n is orthogonal to x n, orthogonal to x n minus 1, orthogonal to x n minus 2 dot 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 dot. Okay. So, you should try to prove it and orthogonal means correlation 0, is not it? All are 0 means correlation covariance means same from now on or throughout the course. No and all everything will be having 0 mean. Okay. So, that means you have to prove that E of expected value of these two, say x n minus k equal to 0, k could be 0, 1 dot 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 up to capital N. This is what you have to prove. So, you replace E n by this expression here and x n minus k multiply. Hmm. Then we prove this equal to 0. Are you following me? But if you try, if you try to prove it that way, I mean just do it, it will be very difficult. Just look at this d n into x n minus k, fine, hmm. d n into x n minus k, but p transpose or inverse x n again into x n minus k, x n is a vector. So, just one component multiplied by x n minus k expected value, expected value will not work on P or R because they are already constant, not random. It will work on this, you will get a kind of clumsy result, after that do what? Okay. But you see how clever your mathematics can be, instead of doing it like this, I say fine, you want to do it for k equal to 0, k equal to 1 up to k equal to n. So, why not do together? E of, then we have, we have to prove this equal to we have to prove that this is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Is not it? And the moment you do that, you get the result. So, I, now you substitute E of d n minus P transpose R inverse x n. Some book have seen foolishly, they have done some elaborate maths and proved it, but I am proving it in one or two lines. I am now putting E n, I am replacing E n by this guy, this is my E n, but I have brought back X n here. Okay. 
instead of x n, suppose I, I yeah, I make a change here, sorry, instead of x n, I make it x transpose n, I make it x transpose n, that is e n into a row vector, first element x n, that should be 0, second element x n minus, that should be 0, so result should be a row vector of 0s, that is what I have to prove. For that convenience, I put x transpose here. Yeah, that is another trick, and also x transpose here. Okay, now consider this. D n into x transpose n. D n is a scalar, and I gave you the definition e of x n vector into d n scalar is a vector p that I gave. So instead of x n, if you make it rho. This is already scalar. That is, if you now take a I mean, mathematically speaking, you can transpose of both sides. Transpose you push inside d transpose n, which is d n. So this is scalar x transpose n. So that will be p transpose. So first guy is p transpose. And you see the beauty is E will work on x n into x transpose n, which is R. That is the advantage I get by bringing a total vector here. Instead of having just x n minus k a scalar here, if I make it vector, immediately I get r and p transpose r inverse that is r. So, p transpose minus p transpose will be 0, 0 row vector. In fact, you could write 0 transpose, all my vectors are column vector, row vector is always transpose. So, you can see by one stroke, and I will really show you some books, you know, where foolishly. They have really carried out this thing elaborately for various cases and all, and finally it proved that it is zero. Where this can be done using this, just instead of taking one at a time, making it a vector, put a transpose there. That's all. <laughs> Immediately it will come. So at least you get an idea that orthogonality. Remember, whether vector space or no vector space, but one thing is there: e n is uncorrelated with x n, x n minus one up to x n minus capital n. I give you the physical interpretation of projection and all that, which is the case actually. That is the basis of all estimation, every field, all these estimation things. But about that, rigorous treatment will be taken up later. Okay. Without that, I cannot proceed uh, further into the topic. Up to some point, I can. I am just giving a idea before that. That projection is always, it means, I mean, this filtering always means projection. So, from this you can then get an idea that suppose the vector that you are projecting it is d, it is already orthogonal to e 1 e 2, e 1 e 2 may not be orthogonal, but suppose d is already uncorrelated with e 1 e 2, correlation that is p vector is 0 vector, p vector there is 0 vector because the correlation between d a d n and x n or d n and x n minus 1 and dot 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 0, but I am dealing with more general case say x 1 sorry instead of x, x 1 x 2. It is giving that correlation between d and x1 or d and x2 is 0, so d has to be in this direction. In this case, from your physical idea, what should be the linear combination so that the uh, error has minimum norm square? Zeros only. Otherwise, the moment you take anything, say anything, this will be the difference, is not it? And that norm square will be greater than norm square of this. Isn't it? So, projection of this vector on this plane is this 0 only. If this is perpendicular, if you take z axis in a x y z plane and per project orthogonally z axis onto the x y plane, you hit at the origin, that is the projection and the entire this vector d is the error, is not it? So, that means, if in this filtering framework it is giving that d n is something which is totally uncorrelated with x n and all the samples of x n, that is p vector is a 0 vector then the best combination should be what? All zeros and that best estimate will be 0. That also comes from the formula because formula is r inverse p, p is a 0 vector, so best weights are zeros. But physically this is what it means. Can you some examples? Example, I have proved this result. So, this situation will arise often. This situation will arise often. Um, okay, we consider that eco canceller problem. You remember the eco canceller problem? There was a signal x n, so you are asking this 
this is a hybrid hybrid we modeled as a fir filter linear fir filter so output of the actually the signal was to go this way and this fellow signal there is a speaker this should go this way this should go this way this should come up but what is happening if this sequence is xn what is coming out is not just this fellow this guy's speech there is yn but yn plus part of xn part of xn e is en so what is coming out if you call this dn dn is yn plus en or en and xn are correlated because n comes from xn en is correlated with but yn has no correlation with yn xn to define speaker xn is coming from you yn is coming from you no correlation uncorrelated suppose zero mean we subtract the mean so if i put an optimal filter here to estimate this what will be the filter contribution in the filter weight from yn part should be zero the p vector p vector is what if i treat the dns this dn as the desired response this expected value of dn times an xn vector so dn means yn plus en so yn times xn vector expected value of that will be zero because of uncorrelated thing isn't it only this part will be there okay en into xn vector hmm so what will be the filter weights here suppose here you have got this coefficients h0 h1 up to say hn and here you want to find out w0 dot 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 wn what will be the optimal ones optimal one w of here will be same as earlier r inverse p is it but what is r r i we know e of xn into xn transpose what is p here p is e of xn vector into en and what is en en is the output due to xn mind you en is output due to xn so basically if you have h vector as h0 h1 dot 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 h what n then h transpose xn that is the n or xn transpose h this is e of xn depends as it is and en en is h transpose xn vector or alternatively x transpose n h vector and h is constant it can go outside expectation this is r r inverse are cancelled so you get back your h isn't it so then optimal weights will be h so if you train it by some adaptive algorithm and that converges on the or that tries to aim at the optimal weights by the adaptive mechanism what will hit upon is this coefficient so ideally the same en will be generated same en will be generated that much will be subtracted you cannot find out yn yn's best estimate will be zero because yn is orthogonal to all the xn's so projection of yn on the plane spans by a space span by xn xn minus 1 of xn minus capital n is zero it's like projecting z axis on xy plane okay there is a plenty such examples you know so i got some idea about the filter actually that why this filter because we are essentially doing nothing else but linear mean square estimation this is the general linear mean square estimation framework that is computation of orthogonal projection we will take this up later more rigorously but without diluting anything so far the discussion was based only on analogy i took the analogy of three dimensional vector angle dot product orthogonality and said that similar thing exists there also that analogy i used but analogy will disappear i'll do these things rigorously without bringing any analogy or any with on the physical planes and all that okay later that is the actual uh, vector space development of based development of filtering and estimation okay in fact this all linear estimation is computation of orthogonal projection and the actual framework for doing that will be vector space framework why you have got an idea about how the vector space things come or we need a more general notion of vector space there analogy will not work 
But analogy, I'm just trying to make you feel comfortable with that. Isn't it? Anyway, so we know your W is R inverse P. Suppose R is given to you, P is given to you. Okay, but I say, look, you know, I don't know how to compute inverse of a matrix. I have no idea. I have no compute. I mean, I, I don't know how to compute. How to go about it then? Suppose. Then I can propose that okay, instead of a closed form solution like this, maybe I can propose an iterative procedure, which at the end of iteration, maybe we'll converge on this. What could be that iterative procedure? So that procedure is called steepest descent. Steepest descent procedure. Huh? We have seen again. I read the figure. This is the W zero dot 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 W n y n. This is what we are very much familiar with, and I'm, I think I have drawn it 10 times or 15 times. I don't know how many times I have drawn so far. But anyway, this is my reference, I have to draw it. <coughs> we have seen that epsilon square, which is expected value of B, this is a quadratic function of the filter weight. Any now you consider, and this is a real function. If you know when these are complex valued, if, I mean, I would have then put a mod here. So, variance is real. So, it is a real function of filter weight. Hmm? But what kind of function? Quadratic function. Now, if you see a quadratic function of one variable or many variables, it has only one unique minima or maxima. Suppose you are dealing with the case of minima. So, if it has only unique minima, then you start from the minima point and go further away in any direction, you can only see the function going up and up and up. It, you can never hit a situation where the function after rising for a while start again uh, falling because then there will be a point of inflection, a minima or maxima or max, local maxima will result, which is not possible, is not it? So, usually this will be like a bowl tepid curve. Hmm? For example, suppose I have got only one tap, suppose I have got only one tap is one word which is sometimes often used for filter weight or filter coefficient tap. Suppose I have got only one tap or one coefficient or one weight, say W, not W0, not W1, not W in N, but only one weight, say W. So, epsilon square will be a quadratic function of W then. So, suppose it should be, it can only have the minima here, say W cap or W op scalar, and this can only from here, I mean, maybe at this point it has this much value. So, if you go to the right or to the left, this can only go up and up and up something like this. It cannot have something like this, you know, it cannot fall because then the local maximum will come up. You understand, no? it can only go on increasing. You cannot have a situation where it again starts falling, then it has to cross, there will be a point of inflection here, which means derivative will be 0, there will be local maxima. But that is not possible with quadratic function. The moment you derive it and equate to 0, you get a first order equation, you get only one solution for minimum maxima problem, is not it? That we all know. So, that cannot happen. If that be so, then like my proposal is that suppose I am running an iterative procedure at ith step of iteration, I have got some value of the weight, weight will change in an iterative manner and will progressively take you to the optimal one, that is my game. So, at i s step of iteration, I can be 0 or 1 or 2 or anything. Suppose you are here, w i. Then the strategy that I should follow is this. At this point, I look at this function. Find out this gradient. If the gradient is positive, some of you are familiar with this thing, you know, in uh, numerical analysis. Similar thing is done in Newton, Dapson and all that. Huh? If you gradient is positive, no point in going further to the right. That is because they will be further away from the minima. So, you should go in the opposite direction. So, if the gradient is positive, next iterate will be what? To the left. That is from the given one, I should subtract 
some number. So, I should look at this uh, on the other hand if I were here gradient is negative then I should not go to the left to this I will add something that means at from i s iterate I should always subtract the correct quantity proportional to the gradient subtract a quantity proportional to the gradient or as a sign of the gradient, but normally I take the proportional with the gradient if the suppose it is w i I take the gradient gradient is positive. So, positive number I say subtract. So, I will go to this side, but if I am here again I say from w i I will subtract a quantity proportional to the gradient, but gradient is negative. So, basically I will be adding. So, I will go to the right is that ok? Is that all right? I am saying from the current iterate I will subtract a quantity proportional to the gradient. So, if the gradient is positive I will indeed subtract positive so subtraction, but if the gradient is negative as here ne subtracting a negative quantity means addition. So, I will add this I will go further so that will be better and again I am not only taking the sign I am taking the gradient. So, I am taking the magnitude of the gradient. So, quantity that is proportional to the gradient means if the gradient is steep. So, the quantity which I will subtract from the iterate that will have the harder, higher magnitude I will jump by a huge margin on the other if the gradient is small positive, but small then I will jump back I will go back by a smaller margin. Okay. So, then what I am aiming at is something like this suppose I am here suppose I am here. let me use a different color huh? then maybe I choose go here I was here huh? I found the gradient gradient is negative and quite steep. So, from w i I subtract a quantity proportional to the proportionally constant is constant so, proportional to the gradient that means gradient was positive. So, I hit somewhere here then again I find out the gradient still gradient is positive but magnitude is much less. So, again I subtract, but this time I go back by a little margin. So, maybe I go back this way this much. Here I find gradient is negative, okay. but again not magnitude is not very high. So, I go forward by a small margin. So, this way back and forth back and forth and I converge on the optimal one. It is something like this you know I am drawing the figure again it become a bit clumsy. Suppose you are here maybe you go here hmm? at this point you found the gradient is positive you subtract it subtract it so much that you cross this and went to the left. This diagram will be easier to you know will be use more useful to explain and then here you find the gradient to be having some magnitude and negative. So, basically you will add so you will go to this side by some amount maybe here then again here you find the gradient positive. So, you subtract so you go somewhere here then here here like that ok. So, finally you should converge on this that means from the current weight w i I will go to the next weight i is the highest step of iteration. So, the next iterate will be what current 1 minus a quantity proportional to the gradient this is epsilon square or quantity proportion that proportional to there should be a proportionally constant that constant is mu, but I take it mu by 2 because I want this 2 to cancel some 2 that will come up. So, mu by 2 is a proportionally constant that times this gradient Where gradient you evaluate at this that point w equal to w i. This is my algorithm. This is called steepest recent algorithm. You are following this? This is the gradient evaluated at that point w equal to w i. I am subtracting a quantity proportional to the gradient. So, this is the proportionality constant. Mu is called the step size, mu is the most important parameter will be with you throughout this course. Step size. Why it is so important, you know. 
if you do not choose carefully, what can happen? Please see this. What can happen is this, if you do not choose carefully, you can hit here. And then from here, you can hit here. Hit here, hit here, hit here like this. They are going down. What is worse, if you still take the higher, you go like this, go up, go up, go up, go up. <laughs> so, actually, obviously, you can see there should be some upper limit of mu. You have to work within that limit. Then only it will fall and it will hit the. Okay, those limits and all we will work out later. So, this is for one variable case that is as though the filter had only one tap w, but now I generalize it vector w i plus 1 is remember now I have got all the n capital filter weights. Mu is a constant, that is it is a proportionality constant. Hmm constant in every step of iteration and when you have multiple weights constant for all the weights same for all the weight then there are there are other versions where you know for each separate weight you will give me more separate mu's those are more complicated cases so w i minus mu by 2 so ah. what tangent at the w i point here so that point i take the tangent yeah and the, whatever the point you are then i have to do so much of comparison i have to find the solution and all that for this point why otherwise then uh, how do you choose this mu how do i choose mu no that there is a little, little theory i will prove convergence there it is very easy okay. it will come into for some correlation figure of the input okay that will take you somewhere else. You are finding a linear equation, you have to find the equation of the line, where it cuts, and you have to do it now in n dimension, which will be too complicated. <laughs> which will not be a line, it will be a plane, and all that. I do not know what you are <laughs> aiming at. So, mu by 2 into not single gradient, so del. You remember del is a vector of all partial derivatives that will do the job, and this we evaluated yesterday. Del w epsilon square at w equal to w i. You all know what we came out with last yesterday. That figure, if you put, what was that figure? There was a 2. The, you see, there was a term W transpose P, and then gave rise to P on differentiation by W, and there was a term W transpose R W, that gave rise to 2 R W, something like that, isn't it? So, you had twice, am I correct? Twice R w minus twice p at w equal to w i, am I correct? Please check. This is what we found out, na? twice R w minus twice p, that is what we found out yesterday. And but w, you have to put w equal to w i, and you see that 2 is coming out, that is why I put a 2 here. So, I want that 2 to go. So, 2 will cancel and what you get then is w i plus mu into p minus r w i. This is the algorithm, this is called steepest descent algorithm. Hmm. We have to choose it, you are just physically understood that there should be an upper limit of mu. There is a procedure to obtain that upper limit, but that, that is not my concern here. This is the algorithm and no matrix inverse is required. You of course, know the need the knowledge of p and r, but no matrix inversion is required. But still this is an offline procedure. You have been given the matrix r and p and you are running this sitting at home idly, not using real time data one after another, is not it? p and r given to you, you are just running an iterative algorithm offline. Suppose I want to do the same thing, this iteration I want to do in real time. So, that my ith iteration index is my nth clock cycle. I am looking, I am switching on a clock, 0th clock cycle at that time I will carry out 0th iteration or first clock as per my clock I will carry out first iteration, same iteration. Okay. How to that is iteration in real time, same iteration. So, I am carrying out the iteration 
okay, over i, but that time i was 0, i was 1, i was 2, dot dot dot, 0, 8, first, second, third, fourth of iteration and all that, okay. I am doing the same iteration, but looking at my clock or some clock. So, iteration is taking place in time. So, that means I replace i a the term i by n, same iteration, but instead of calling i th iteration, I am saying n th iteration, no problem. But n is a real clock cycle, sample, uh, sample cycle, okay, sample index, we can also say. That is how I am doing the iteration. Secondly, you had a matrix R, you had a matrix R. What is R? R is E of X n in the our case transpose X. Suppose you really want to have a good idea about R. What you should do? You take one vector X n multiplied by X transpose n, take X n minus one vector multiplied by X transpose n minus one vector and go on adding for say maybe 100 such cases divide by 100 you get a good estimate. Simple uh, statistical averaging you take like you know I mean uh, x n x transpose n plus x n minus 1 x transpose n minus 1 dot 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 say x n minus l x transpose n minus l divide by how many here l plus 1 this will be a good estimate is it? But suppose I want to replace it by a good estimate, I am like a madman or whatever, crazy man. I say that I do not want the estimate to be good, I will take only one element. So, that will be a weird estimate. Okay, if, you, if I suppose I am measuring a quantity, random variable, I should take several cases and then add up and take the average. But if you take only one, then it will be weird estimate because the variance of that will go up because every time the sample is changing, observation is changing, you get this estimate or this value or that value. So, but suppose I say that fine, still however crude it is, I will live with it. So, that means I will replace it by simply x n, x transpose n. Similarly, p is x n d n. So, again, you should have x n d n plus x n minus 1 vector into d n minus 1 plus dot 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 up to say l times add an average, but suppose again like a madman I replace it just by 1. I am saying that okay, however crude the estimate is, suppose we work with this estimate. Finally, in the end if I can show that things will work with this, then I am through. Things indeed work with this because you know in the filter in the iterative procedure x n past in the past case it will be x n minus 1 past so, uh, internal averaging will take place in a iterative procedure that we will see. So, if I replace this in the steepest descent algorithm what will that be steepest descent was just one more minute I will finish and I uh, will start from here in the next class it was this is not it E minus R W I. So, now this will become W n plus 1 I replaced by n I am doing real time I am doing this iteration real time plus mu, this is x n d n and this is x n x transpose n w n okay. r is x x transpose w i means w n this is x n d n. Now, take this x n vector out common just one more minute huh? this x n vector common. So, what do you get? d n here, please see this I am going first d n minus this x n has come out. So, only x transpose w, but x transpose w is what same as w transpose x that is the filter output at anything the x you have got a filter vector that transpose x or x transpose w both are same that is the filter output at anything index. So, d n minus y n and this is that error e n this is equal to e n. So, you get this quantity. This is the most famous adaptive filter algorithm. This becomes now adaptive because I am working in real using real time data x n and d n and all that only I am doing the iterative procedures iteration in real time using the data no R matrix no p vector provided it converges gives you satisfactory result that is a separate matter which we will see. This is called least mean square LMS algorithm. I will talk more about this I will just give a basic derivation. So, I will start from here in the next class thank you very much.